every man isn't a good man and that's on period, but there are certain types of men that you should avoid while dating. And we're going to break down seven of them right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Keeping It Real with Keandra. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. So I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. This list is not exhaustive because I wanted to add so many more things on here. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to break down for y'all the seven different men that you should avoid while dating. And actually, I'm going to give y'all eight because I need to throw in a little extra bonus. But just so you guys know, I am also going to do a separate video just for the men regarding the seven women that you should avoid dating too because it's not fair for me to be on the men and not get on the women too so i'm gonna link that up here so y'all can see that one and watch it as well so look my model and the name of the game is if you see any of these men I want you to think of it as a red flag <laughs> and it's probably going to be a hard stop. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have conversations and you don't explore and you don't talk to them directly about it. It just means that you need to be extremely cautious and extremely aware because this type of man is not going to go over well in the dating situation. And more than likely, y'all going to wind up stop dating, break up, and you're going to move on to the next. But nevertheless, I want you to be aware of this so you won't keep dating the same type of men over and over. I know, ladies, we have a pattern of dating the same type of men, but with just a different face. <laughs> I don't want you to do that. So let's get into the first one. The first one is the player, the player, player from the Himalaya. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> That's off of Martin for the... Player, player from the Himalayas. The show, Martin. Okay, whatever. So the player is going to be the man who dates multiple women at the same time, but doesn't have any intention of locking in one, any intention of being committed to one, any intention of being exclusive, any intention of doing anything, but probably smashing. He's essentially going to have manipulative behavior, y'all. He is not going to be the one that you call on when you need something. He is not the person that you are going to want to try to marry because, again, he's keeping all of his options open. And I'm not talking about someone who quantum dates to find their person. They're dating multiple people to find a relationship, long-term marriage or whatever, because this person has no intention of trying to find a life partner or someone they can be with. They just want to run through women. They want to be a player. They want to manipulate. They're going to try to get their way at any cost for their own benefit. And they don't care anything about you. So this type of man is one to avoid completely. And he's going to be the one to avoid because he only prioritizes his own wants, his own needs, his own feelings. He don't care about you, girl. So the player player from the Himalayas needs to go back to the Himalayas because, honey, his little tactics ain't going to work over here no more. The next one, number two, the second type of man that you should avoid while dating is the commitment fold. Fold means phobia. That's short for phobia, right? The person who is scared, the man who is scared of commitment. So this isn't just a player player that, you know, essentially is dating multiple women to manipulate them to get his own way and has no intention of wifing any of them or being in a long-term relationship. This person is fearful of committing. This person is fearful of getting into a relationship. And more times than not, he has some deeper issues that he hasn't worked through. He's unhealed and he needs to go to therapy and work through some things before he even gets into a relationship with you in general. He probably shouldn't be dating at all, but since we're here, he has a fear of getting into a committed relationship. This is going to be indicative because he's going to have a whole bunch of very short-lived relationships or flings. And it may be because he just doesn't want to be in a relationship. But from what I understand this person to be and what I understand this type of man to be, it's because of some deeper unresolved issues. Maybe he was in a relationship and he got burned and he was in love and the girl treated him wrong. And so now he's like, Ooh, 
I'm nervous and scared to want to be with somebody else because I don't want that to happen again. I got my heart broken and I don't want to go through that again. So he's going to keep relationships at a very superficial level. And if you haven't watched one of my other videos where I break down the different attachment styles, that's a video that I'm going to link up here too so y'all can watch. But it is about, you know, the different types of relationship attachments that we have to one another in romantic relationships. But it, it, it applies to other relationships too. But I know for a fact that this person, the commitment phobe, has some type of avoidant attachment style because he's going to avoid trying to connect with people because he thinks, dang, if I do connect with them, I'm going to have to eventually wind up being with the person. And I don't want or need that in my life right now. So he's running away, literally being fearful of commitment. And that's a scary place to be in, because like I mentioned before, this person may not be doing it intentionally, but it's because of some deeper hurt and unresolved issues. It could have been from a previous relationship, childhood stuff, mommy wounds, mommy issues, huh? Because we don't talk enough about mommy issues. We talk a lot about daddy, but we don't talk enough about mommy. Those are things too. So the commitment phobe is another type of man that you want to avoid. And this man could potentially work out in the future if he gets his ish together, right? So if he works on his avoidant relationship attachment style, if he works on why he's so fearful of committing to one woman, or if he works through his stuff, whatever's unhealed, he could potentially be a good partner in the future. But for right now, it's a no for us. It's a no. The third type of man that you want to avoid while dating is the controlling man. This man is going to try to control, to manipulate, and to dominate you. This is very different from a man who might be trying to lead and show leadership in your relationship or in your household. This is someone who's literally trying to isolate you, who's going to pull you away from your family and friends, who's going to tell you what you can and cannot wear, who's going to tell you what you can and cannot watch, who's going to tell you what you can and cannot listen to, who's going to try to dictate every single aspect of your life. And we know that that isn't what a relationship should entail. Someone trying to control every aspect Aspect of you doesn't allow you to have the autonomy and the freedom that you should have to be your authentic self in a relationship. So if you are finding that he is trying to do the most, and it's not just like some one-off situation, but this is a consistent pattern that you have seen this man do while dating you, <laughs> Oh, baby, this is moving towards the realm of abuse. This can turn emotionally, verbally, mentally, spiritually, financially past the point of no return. And so I need to nip this in the bud while I possibly can. So if you're seeing that he has controlling patterns over and over again, this is a man that you need to avoid while dating, period. So the next one, number four, the fourth type of man to avoid while dating is the emotionally unavailable man. Now, we kind of talked about this just a tad bit, but there's different types of availability, right? And so if a man is not emotionally open with you, sharing his thoughts, sharing his feelings, wanting to have deeper conversations, wanting to get to know you on a deeper level, wanting you to get to know him without shame, without guilt, without restriction and you're finding that he is dismissive and you're finding that he is unresponsive and you're finding that he shuts down deeper conversations and you're finding that he just doesn't have any type of emotional availability. I'm going to link that. I'm going to link that one up here so y'all can watch that video too. If you're finding that he has no emotional availability, it could be multiple things. It could be he just wasn't taught which is what I break down in the other video, because in society, especially if you are a man, if you are a man of color, if you're a black man, society teaches you a different set of rules, so to speak, than us women who are more naturally tap into our emotions and our feelings. And men are not governed that way. They're not raised that way. Society does not bring them up in the same way that they bring up us women. And so we find out that these same men 
who were once suppressed, who were once emotions and stuff is told to suck it up and you're not a real man and you will be worried if you cry and, you know, all of those things that when we get into a relationship with them, they don't have the skill set to be able to be emotionally available. For some of these men, it's not their fault. They were just never taught. They weren't given instructions. They weren't given examples of what that looked like, where they saw other men who look like them be vulnerable, right? So we can't necessarily blame and knock them. But at the same time, when you are a full blown adult and it has been brought to your attention that you are emotionally unavailable, especially women, ladies, y'all are watching this. You should be having those conversations, right? And so if you're bringing it to his attention and saying, hey, when I try to have deeper conversations with you, you shut it down. You're unresponsive. You're, you don't share your thoughts or feelings. And what I share mine, you're not receptive of them. And he doesn't acknowledge that. And he doesn't want to improve or any of those things even the little baby progress to me is still progress but if he doesn't want to do any of those things then this is a type of man that you want to avoid because he's not just going to magically become emotionally available when you get into a relationship with him he's not going to magically just start to tap in you know when you marry him those same patterns that you're seeing in the dating phase <laughs> those same red flags <laughs> you're going to see them amplified in a long-term relationship and amplified in marriage, I'm talking about a microscope. What's the thing that zooms in? Um, yeah, microscope It's going to be under a microscope and things are going to be magnified. So just take that into consideration. If you are dealing with a man who is emotionally unavailable, this is definitely a type of man that I would avoid dating. And also I would just encourage him to unpack why he's emotionally unavailable. Again, go to therapy, let him work through his ish because also too, because if he gets it together and there's other qualities there, he may be a good man to date. But right now in the current state of being an emotionally unavailable man, this is not someone that we want to entertain. Moving on to the fifth type of guy that you want to avoid while dating is the narcissist. Now, I'm not going to get on my soapbox or at least try not to on this one, but I think that this is a term that is completely overused and misused. So a lot of y'all don't even understand what a real narcissist is. I'm a real licensed therapist, so I know what I'm talking about. So y'all just use this haphazardly. Y'all just say, oh, he's a narcissist. She's a narcissist. I was with the narcissist. Nar, 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 nar. It's just like nine times out of 10, the people that you guys are dealing with are not a real narcissist. Narcissist is a per narcissistic personality disorder is a personality disorder that is rooted in their childhood that they developed because they didn't get the care and the support and the love and all of the good things that they were supposed to get in their childhood. So they grew up because of life circumstances to be a self-entitled, manipulative, i.e. fill in the blank, whatever type of person. That is very different, okay, than having someone who has narcissistic traits. The people that y'all are dealing with are the people that have just the traits. They may be mean. They may be manipulative at times. They may be disrespectful. They may feel like they're never wrong. And those are just traits. But we're talking about something that is a personality disorder. It is pervasive. It is something that they have had their whole entire life. And most of y'all are not dealing with that. You're just dealing with somebody who has the traits. That's another conversation for another day. But nevertheless, if you are dealing with someone who either has the personality disorder or has any of the traits, this is also someone that I would avoid dating. And I'm telling you this because this person will be manipulative. They will never, ever take responsibility for their actions, even when they're wrong. They will gaslight the hello goodbye out of you time and time again and make you feel like you are the one that's wrong all the time, that you were the one who doesn't understand that you are the inferior one, and that's inaccurate. So this person rarely ever prioritizes or considers your feelings. It's always about them. And these types of people are very cunning. They're very well-liked. They're very well-received by other people. So on the outside, they have this very well-put-together persona, and people are like, they would never do that. That person is so sweet and so kind kind and so gentle, meek and mild, but behind closed doors, they are a savage. And so it is something that you want to be aware of if you are seeing those qualities in a narcissistic individual, whether that's a trait, whether that is a personality disorder, whatever the case may be, this is not something that I will play with. As a therapist, as a licensed therapist who has worked with people, this isn't one that I will even entertain.
<laughs> if you can never take responsibility for your actions, even when you are blatantly wrong, this is never someone that I would want to be in a relationship with because we're human. No one, no one, not one person on this planet is perfect. And so for you to not to be able to say, my bad, you're right. I was wrong on that. It's a no for me. Again, Issa, no. Number six, the sixth type of guy that you should avoid dating is the serial cheater. <laughs> and I'm using the term serial cheater because I do believe that there are people, because of the countless work that I have done with tons and tons of individuals and couples, I do believe that there are people who cheat and it's a one-off situation, right? Not to say that it's right, but they got into a situation with somebody, they got a little bit too comfortable, whether that was sexually, physically, emotionally, whatever, and they wind up crossing lines and boundaries and cheating, right? And then there's other people who fall into what I would call the serial cheater category. This is the people who cheat, cheat again, cheat again after that, and cheat again some more after that. Like they just keep going for it time and time and time again. And they also lack the remorse. They also lack the consequence. They just keep doing it. And it's just I don't know why they do what they do, but it is something that you do not want to consistently be in a relationship or dating someone who's going to consistently cheat on you, consistently step out on you, consistently betray you. And I'm not saying consistently, like even the one-off situation is okay, but also to understanding that serial cheating is a pattern. And what we know is about, <laughs> is about human behavior is that sometimes, not all the time, but past behavior is oftentimes indicative of future behavior. I'm gonna say that again for the people in the back. Here's your therapy lesson for the day. Past behavior is oftentimes indicative of future behavior. So if you would do it once and not get caught, or there wasn't a consequence, or your partner stayed with you, chances are you're like, oh, okay, well, maybe I can do it again and see what happened. Okay, nothing happened this time. Oh, I'm going to keep doing it because not only is it, you know, pleasing to me and probably pumping up my ego, but also I'm with a partner who seems to not really care about that. So avoid dating a serial cheater at all costs. And so cheating also has variables to it, meaning people think that, different things are cheating. What's cheating to me may not be cheating to you. What's cheating to the next person may not be cheating to your partner. So it's important to break it down all the way down to the ground, what your perception and your idea of cheating is and understanding that same perspective from the other person. So y'all can be on the same page at all times because it's not just sexual cheating. When we think of cheating, it's like, oh yeah, you slept with somebody, but there's physical cheating. Like you touch someone, y'all out here holding hands or doing things that you're supposed to be doing with your partner with somebody else. There is financial cheating where you sneaking and hiding and buying people <laughs> and doing all different types of things behind the scenes that your partner doesn't know about. There's spiritual cheating where you are connected with a spiritual person or a person that has a spiritual connection more than you connected to God and to your partner, there's so many different types of emotional cheating, right? All of this is showing me that all of the time, energy, and effort and output that I should be putting with my partner or the person that I'm dating, if I'm giving it out to somebody else, then baby, chances are there's some type of cheating all up in, through, and around that thing. The next one, number seven, before I get into the bonus, and I don't know if this one needs to be said, but I had to add it to the list. This is the abusive man. This is a man to not date, entertain, don't be around, don't nothing him, okay? And so I don't know if this goes without saying, but I had to make sure that because there are different types of cheating, like we just talked about, there's also different types of abuse. There's physical abuse, there's verbal abuse, there's emotional abuse, there's spiritual abuse, there's financial abuse, there's so, mental, there's so many different types of abuse. And so I don't want you to think that just because a man isn't putting his physical hands on you that you're not experiencing abuse. Because baby, there's a lot of y'all listening to this right now who's going to be like, oh shoot, he has been talking to me crazy consistently for the past 20 years. And he called me on my name and he get real close. And he be yelling and screaming and I get scared. You're going to realize that there are some things up in here that's like, whoa, 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 this is not okay. So being with an abusive man is not even an option in the dating phase, honey, because if he's abusive in the dating phase, for sure going to be abusive. And sometimes that abuse escalates. 
It might just be something teeny tiny and small. And you're like, oh, that's not a big deal. But then it can turn into a monster later on. And you look up and find yourself in a situation that you didn't even want to be in. So I'm going to say it right here. Your safety is always number one. Your well-being is always number one. If you got kids or kids with this person, their safety is also included in that. Safety is always number one. If you feel unsafe at any given time, I don't care where you're at, what you're doing, whatever the case may be, get the heck up out of there. Find somebody that you can trust and make sure you get to a safe location at all times. And the last one, number eight, which is the bonus that I had to throw in here, y'all. This is the man that I don't take care of my kids that I currently have, but I want to have new kids with you. Oh, yeah, that type of man exists. The man that says, oh, you know, I got these kids, but, you know, I'm not taking care of them because my baby mama, you know what I'm saying? She not. And they got two, three kids, even one kid that they're not an active participant in that child's life, but they turn around and want to have more kids with you. <laughs> Red flag, uh, stay over there, sir. Don't come over here trying to date me. And this is a real thing. And I'm not talking about the situations where a man truly does desire to be an active father in someone's life, in their child's life, but the baby mom, you know, is causing some friction or is not making that happen or, you know, there's some type of issue there. I'm not talking about those men. I'm talking about the men that are raggedy, the men that know that they got kids that they're not taking care of in any capacity, not financially. They're not showing up. They're not being present. They're not calling. They're not doing anything, but they still want to have more kids with you. It's a no, girl. Do not have <laughs> do not have kids, more kids with this man. If he's not taking care of the previous kids that he already has, I don't care what you say. It is not okay for him to even think about coming over here. I have told my homegirls, my clients, and everybody, I'm going to tell y'all too, listen, this is unacceptable. It is not okay to think that he has a set of kids over here <laughs> and then he's magically just going to be a great and amazing father with you because, you know, you're having his baby no, this is indicative of a character issue. This is indicative of a flaw. This is indicative of a personality that I am not okay with. You have children in this world that you're not taking care of and you want to create more with me. What's going to happen if something happened between me and you? You're going to not take care of my kids too. Like that is going to be the pattern. And so I'm not trying to be judgmental to these men. Again, there are exceptions to every single rule, but I just want you ladies to be aware that this is a red flag for me. Do not <laughs> be trying to get with a man who's not willing to take care of his responsibilities. He's running from his responsibilities just because you kill and you find and, you know, that's the past and all. He is probably going to pull up and try to treat you the same way if something goes left. So just be aware of that because I had to add that in here, too, because that man, whoo, that type of man is not a man that you want to probably be with long term. So here's my final thoughts on the different types of men that you should avoid dating. Again, these are just kind of like generalizations, but I just don't want y'all to play yourself. Don't play yourself. Assess the individual, assess the person that you're dating. Let it be on a case by case basis. Do your due diligence. Do your due diligence. Make informed decisions. I don't want you to say, well, that type of guy's on Keanu's list, so it's a wrap. But dig a little bit deeper. Have the conversations. Be wise. Make sure you are praying about it. You're checking in with your instincts, making sure that you are doing what needs to be done before you fully commit to somebody who might have some of these red. Red flags because honey I don't want you to end up in a situation where you could potentially regret it so thank you so much for watching another episode of keeping it real with Keandra make sure to share this with your homegirl because I know you know somebody who needs to hear this information and I will see you guys next time be blessed bye